Blog Talk Radio. Good afternoon, folks. It's Ghost here, once again, with another edition of True Conservative Radio. And once again, I'm the host of the man they call Ghost, and I thank you for tuning in with me. This is a post-Valentine's Day show. It's free format. I typically have my show later on in the evening. I still may have that show. Uh, but there's a whole bunch of reasons why I threw this impromptu show, and you know that's why I'm up here this afternoon. I mean, first of all, it is post Valentine's Day, and if you've been keeping up with me, if you were uh, heard me in the archive and that sort of thing, you'll understand that uh, you know I'm not really too happy about Valentine's Day, what it's turned into, what it turned uh, the uh, quintessential relationship into. I mean, it's turned most relationships into uh, monetary value and that sort of thing. And I went into uh, detail about that early, uh, I think it was Valentine's Day morning. But uh, today I also wanted to maybe elaborate a little bit on that. I also wanted to elaborate on the fact that uh, social liberalism is alive and well in the Republican Party, and I just want to keep urging true conservatives not to vote, not to vote in the presidential election. Don't contribute to the social liberalism that has infected both parties. Well, first of all, screw the left. I mean, everybody knows that everybody on the left is nothing but a bunch of left-wing, long-haired, liberal, bedwetting hippies. We already know that, but the right. You know, I'm a lifelong Republican, like I stated uh, over and over and over again, folks. And to see the Republicans sit here and bow down to social liberalism makes me want to puke. We're going to talk about that uh, this afternoon. We're going to talk about a whole lot of things. And I encourage everybody, if you happen to be within the sound of my voice, give me a call. Pick up the phone. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. Give me a call up. We're going to talk about everything, anything. we got two hours here to kill. This is True Conservative Radio, folks. And I'm the host of the man they call Ghost. But I wanted to go into uh, Valentine's Day. Now, what what in the blue hell is Valentine's Day nowadays? You know what I'm saying? What is Valentine's Day? It's a a novelty holiday. Uh, You you understand what I'm saying? And what it has made the average relationship turn into is a monetary piece of garbage. And, And that's what it is, folks. I'd like to think that Valentine's Day had some sort of sentimental meaning. I mean, you you know, but no, all all you see is a bunch of people just buying shiny objects for their significant other, and typically it's it's, uh, men buying it for the women. I mean, I'd like to see, uh, you know, more females buying more shiny objects for the men on Valentine's Day, but that's not how it works, isn't it? I mean, the feminist movement, and I've stated this over and over, has turned the average American woman into a subliminal prostitute, and that's what I'm talking about. And I'd like somebody, and I don't care if you're a feminist, I don't care if you're just somebody out there playing with your pecker shaft, I don't care what you're doing, I challenge anybody who disagrees with me to give me a call. And tell me why, why I'm off my rocker, why I'm wrong. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. I mean, Valentine's Day, it, it just reinforces the fact that we have nothing but a bunch of subliminal prostitutes out here. Subliminal prostitutes that are just accepting gifts for what? I mean, for what? And it's just absolutely ridiculous, folks. And it's destroying the American family. I mean, all this monetary garbage uh, related to relationships, it's it's destroying the American family. And I am a foot soldier for the American family. I've stated it time and time again. But you see, nobody wants to save the American family, folks. People could give two rats' asses about it. And that's what I don't understand. I mean, can somebody please tell me why nobody gives a crap about this anymore? Can can somebody tell me why people are just, you know, bowing down to the fact that most people are going to be a bunch of heathens? And a bunch of Neanderthals, a bunch of people that are just going to be sexually promiscuous and 
and de- deposit their seed in, in any egg. I mean, it's just, it's just getting sickening, folks. Now, do I feel that everybody should be married? No, it's your right not to get married. But let me tell you, if you're having children, you should be getting damn married, okay? And I don't give a damn if these feminists are going to sit here and try to boil it down to woman liberation, uh, you know, for women to have children on her. I, I don't care. I don't care how they justify it. It's wrong. It's ruining society. Uh, you're, I mean, just look at the generations that are coming up the ladder here. Look, just look at them and take a good look at them, and you're going to see what I'm talking about. you got a public education system, and I've stated this over and over again. It's been infiltrated by a bunch of feminists and liberals. Can't even play tag anymore in elementary school. Can't even play dodgeball. Can't even play any kind of contact sports anymore because, well, you know, the liberals and the feminists, they don't want anybody to get hurt. And they apply this political correctness garbage to everybody, male and female, in the school school districts. And they utilize it to subdue and completely emasculate the American male. And you see, every time I try to bring this subject matter up for debate, nobody wants to debate. All they do is throw logical fallacies at me, you know. And and I have... I have challenged every damn feminist, every damn liberal. I don't care who you are. I've challenged you, and you haven't said a damn thing. You notice that, folks? You can you can listen to me live or in the archive. Check out the archives, folks, and you're going to see nobody has any substance. I mean, I put everybody in their place that calls up in here in opposition of what I'm doing because they have no substance. All they're going to do is call up and, and yell personal attacks, four-letter words. That's all they are going to do. And it's not just the liberals, folks, and I'm telling you, if you're a lifelong Republican, and, well, first of all, if you're a Republican and uh, you could care less about the American family, well, by all means, stay in that liberal piece of trash organization. But if you actually care about the moral ethos of society, if you actually care about the American family, if you actually care about how our children are raised, well, then you need to take a more conservative approach to your life. Everybody, everybody out there. I'm having myself some orange soda this afternoon. Very good, very good stuff, by the way. It's good and refreshing. But anyway, folks, Valentine's Day is a farce. I went to uh, one of these alcoholic beverage establishments last evening, took my wife out, you know, a a mature place, not one of these uh, places where the young kids hang out, you know, more of a mature environment. You had a lot of uh, affluent people, that sort of thing. Uh, And and I just looked at the social landscape of everything. You know, you had all these nimrods out here uh, going up to everything that was of the opposite sex and buying drinks and buying this and kissing ass and uh, it's just ridiculous okay i mean look i don't understand this okay i don't understand this why do females go to the damn bar with no money i mean can somebody explain that to me why are females going to the bar with no money? Yeah, I'll tell you why they're going to the bar with no money. Because they know that they're going to be goofy-ass, feminized, emasculated males that are going to come out the pocket and that are just going to buy drinks, no questions asked. That's all there is to it. They're basically just giving them money. You might as well burn that money. It's sad. You know, you're actually paying for a woman's time in this day and age. You know that? That's subliminal prostitution, folks. I don't give a damn who tries to justify it. I don't give a damn. It's subliminal prostitution, all right? If you're a woman that accepts drinks on a consistent basis from a man that you know you're not attracted to, that you know you're not going to have any kind of relations with, you're a goddamn prostitute. No matter how you want to look at it, you're a prostitute, you know it, and I know it. And I don't give a damn who tries to justify it any which way. You're a damn subliminal prostitute, and you should be ashamed of yourself. All of you. All of you damn people. It's ridiculous. 
I mean, that just goes to show you when you got females out here on Valentine's Day going to the bar, all right, going to an alcoholic beverage establishment with absolutely no money. That's when you know you're a goddamn prostitute, and that's the way it is. That's all there is to it. I know there's a lot of women out there that, that, that are having a hard time swallowing what I'm saying because they know they're a damn prostitute, too. Now, you see, I'm not generalizing all women out here. I know that there's some good conservative women that still believe in the American family, that still believe in raising their children, I mean, that, that, that make a conscious effort to perpetuate a better mentality for their, uh, for their next generations. But let me tell you, that's a minority now, folks. All right, and if you don't believe me, if you have a child that's in public school, you should know what I'm saying. Because who are the people influencing your child in a two-parent family? Let's say you are a two-parent family, you're doing whatever it takes to raise your child. Who is influencing your child? It's a damn uh, person or a damn kid from, from a single-parent family, okay? Uh, they're typically left alone most of the time, so, you know, what do they do? They get in front of a boob tube, a violent video game, or they listen to these ridiculous products sold via the media. And that's how they develop their personality. That's how they develop their mentality. And, and they, in turn, ruin it for everybody. You know, they influence children that are headed towards the right direction. And this is what I'm saying, folks. Uh, we got to get back to the brass tacks of things. We we need to bring back the American family, and on top of which, we need to get rid of all the mechanisms that are ruining it. All right. First and foremost, like I've stated over and over again, public school is public enemy number one. All right. I mean, bottom line is we all all you teachers out there, and let me tell you, I get a lot of teachers that write me that. That are that are sitting here scolding mad, you know, because I, I I don't give them respect. I'm a teacher. I deserve respect. You don't deserve crap, okay? If you're a teacher, you're a damn feminist or or a damn liberal, okay? And, and if you don't want to interpret that properly, if you just want to sit over there and skirt around the issue about it, well, that's your damn problem. That's your problem because let me tell you something. You're not teaching our children, okay? You're teaching our children to be a bunch of emasculated fruit bowls. That's what you're doing. And you want to get pay raises for that. You want to get pay raises for the fact that our children are graduating high school dumber than a damn doorknob. And you want to get, pay, get raises for it. Let me tell you something. If you're a teacher, you get no respect from me, okay? You want to know why you get no respect from me? Because you're not doing your damn job. That's why you don't get any respect from me. And you're going to continue to get the utmost disrespect because I spit on all you teachers. Public education, that mind you. I mean, we, we need to get rid of public education, folks. All these bureaucrats, all these feminists, all these liberals that are being paid by the government via public education, these people are living their dream. They're living their dream being paid by the state. And they should be ashamed of themselves. All they're doing is perpetuating an emasculated mentality on our American males out here. They're perpetuating a subliminal prostitution mentality on the females. And you're seeing, you're seeing the prevalence of it. You're seeing the damn prevalence of it. I mean, just look at this past Valentine's Day, folks. I'd like for somebody to give me a statistic. If you're out there listening, if you happen to know this statistic or you happen to know a source to this statistic, I want to know this statistic, okay? How many males in this country bought their female a shiny object to display on their body, like a ring or a bracelet or a watch? How many of them bought their uh, either wife or girlfriend that type of uh, object for Valentine's Day? And, and I'd like to see... How many women even bother to buy garbage for their man? And I'm telling you, it's going to be a lopsided ratio. I guarantee it. It's sad to say, believe I, I know. People are probably getting upset with me. And let me tell you, if you've got enough balls, call call me. If I'm wrong, call me, 646-652-4869. We're here at the Blog Talk Radio Network. You can get back to us here in the chat room, 
blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, G-H-O-S-T, and just click the chat now option and chat with me here. I mean, we're talking about post-Valentine's Day, okay? And Valentine's Day is no longer about love, folks. It's no longer about affection and romance and caring. It's about monetary value. That's what it is. I mean, it's this mentality that has destroyed the American family. And that's what I am, folks. I am a foot soldier for the American family, and I could care less if anybody doesn't like it. I get emails saying that I just need to accept the fact that this is the way it is. You know that? I have people that actually sit here and say, hey, you know what? This is, this is social evolution. This isn't social evolution. This is social de-evolution, you piece of crap. That's what it is. Social de-evolution. You got, you know, people out here having about five or six kids from five or six different partners, and you're going to want me to accept that as social evolution? You're a damn liberal piece of trash if you think this is social evolution, folks. All right, I mean, if you look back in history, the, the family is the foundation and the essence of humanity. And you idiots need to understand this. And if you disagree with me, by all means, give me a call. But you're not going to give me a call. You want to know why? Because you're an idiot. If you disagree with me, you're an absolute buffoonery. Because all I'm trying to do is save the American family, and I'm the bad guy. You know what I mean? Uh, I, all around BTR, the Blog Talk Radio Network, uh, I'm people are calling me all kinds of slanderous names and all kinds of four-letter words and whatnot just because I want to save the American family, just because I believe in true conservative principles, just because I won't sell out my own soul to some ridiculous uh, party or something that matter. But this is the way it is, I'm telling you, folks. This is what Valentine's Day has turned the average female into. It's turned them into a subliminal prostitute. All right, that's all there is to it. Uh, you know, Valentine's Day, first of all, it's a novelty holiday, okay? It's, it's created by corporate America. So, I mean, if you think that there's any type of real value to Valentine's Day, you're an absolute buffoonery. All right? By bottom line, you're an absolute buffoonery. But it's a novelty holiday, folks. It's what it is. But you see, you, you know what? Uh, and, and nobody's even talking about this. And I'm going to continue talking about it. I'm going to come up on here over and over again on Blog Talk Radio to talk about how the American family is being destroyed and all these liberals are turning a blind eye to it. All of them. All of them are. And, and there's nothing they can say about it. They can't debate me about it because they know it's true. Anyway, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. If you're out there listening and if you're disagreeing with me, stop tickling your ass crack. Give me a call and try to explain to me why I'm wrong, why I'm off my rocker. But you're not going to call, like I stated. I mean, what are you going to do? You're going to debate me about the American family being wrong? You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. The bottom line is you're not going to do it. All you're going to do is just sit here and spew off a bunch of liberal nonsense. And that's what this is, folks. I'm telling you, you know, Valentine's Day, post-Valentine's Day, all these females, I shouldn't say all of them. Like I said, I know a lot of conservative women who still believe in the American family, who still believe that the American family is worth saving and that sort of thing. But, you know, Valentine's Day... It's basically perpetuating everything that I've stated over and over again, and that means the average westernized woman, and I'm not just speaking of the United States woman, I'm talking about westernized countries. Most of them are subliminal prostitutes. It, I mean, you know, most of these females nowadays don't go for a man based on their character and integrity. No, they go, they go for them for how much monetary value they can give them. May it be shiny little objects to put on their fingers, or, or you know, uh, you got these ridiculous watches and all that garbage. It's ridiculous. 
And then the American family's being decimated because of it. I mean, look at the social norms. The so, you know, what used to be a social ill back in my day is now the social norm. Uh, you know, people having about five or six different kids from five or six different partners is the social norm. People having about five or six different divorces is the social norm. And why is it the social norm? Because you've got liberals, feminists, and all these other uh, left-wing uh, offshoot groups that have not only infiltrated the apparatus of public education, that have not only uh, infiltrated uh, our justice system, I mean, they have absolutely implemented the pussification, all right? The absolute pussification of America. And if you don't believe me, just take a look at our justice system, folks. And I've stated this over and over again. If you're a man, hard-working man, you work 15 hours a day, you break your back, you, you put food on the table, you put a roof over your family's head, you put clothes on their back, your wife could go out and cheat on you with the milkman, and you can catch her right in the middle of the act, and guess what? This justice system will give her the damn children. Can you believe that? I mean, here you are, you're just doing what the right thing is, the good moral right thing to do, which is raise your family, and what happens? You, you got female, a female can literally go out and, and hop on something that looks good in a leather jacket, and not only does she get to take the children, she gets to take 50% of what you're worth, even though she went around and became a, a philanderous whore bag behind your back. And, and not only that, you get child support. If alimony is legal in your state, you got to pay alimony. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. And I got uh, Roscoe Phil talking about how welfare is raising our children. Well, hey, Roscoe Phil, thank you for joining us. First of all, we're, we're here in the chat room. The thing about it is, it, it, the reason that we are having a systematic destruction of the American family is because, it, in my view, and I've stated this before, the liberals that have infiltrated our whole society. I mean, it's just everywhere. I mean, even if you vote for the Republicans nowadays, it's liberalism. They could care less about the American family anymore. This John Turncoat McCain, he's two issues away from being a full-out liberal, and he could care less about the American family. He could care less. But what happens, okay? What they're trying to do is systematically destroy the American family is because the American family is what created this country. It not only created this country, it's the foundation of humanity. If you look at early tribal civilizations, you'll understand that what kept those folks together was family. I mean, that's what motivated the man to go out and hunt animals twice, three times his side for food, for, for clothing, for shelter. It was the family. But you see, the systematic destruction of the American family is being done purposely. You're, you're seeing it via the media, you're seeing it via, you know, every form of media out there. You're seeing it with the influence of social landscape. And what's happening is, is once the American family is completely decimated, and it's going to be, it makes it easier for these liberals to push their agenda. And what's their agenda? More government. That's right, more government. I mean, I'm very disappointed with George W. Bush, okay? And, I, and look, I, I'm one to think that he was a great president, but this economic stimulus package, all right, that is a step into socialism. I don't care what anybody says about it. But do you see anybody really hooping and hollering about this socialist program? No. You want to know why? Because most of the people that out there that need the money are, are probably women out here with about five or six kids from five or six different fathers. You know that these people that are sitting here, uh, collecting these stimulus packages on all these children that they have. You know, they also got tax uh, refund money. Tax refund money. 2000 a kid, every woman out here got. $2,000 a kid this tax season of your money, of our taxpaying dollars. So we're rewarding women to go out and be philanderous whores. It's ridiculous. And, and Roscoe, Phil, I'm not getting, uh, first of all, I'm not getting any money. I'm a business owner, okay? I, I'm getting a tax break, which is great, but I'm not getting any money. It, it, it's really sad uh, about this economic stimulus package 
you know, we're borrowing $150 billion for this stimulus package from China. And what are, what are people going to do with this money? They're going to either go out and pay uh, credit interest on it, or they're going to go out and pay for Chinese goods. That's what they're going to do. They're going to put it right back into the Chinese economy. And it's ridiculous. It really is. I, and I'm out here in Texas, folks. And another thing that's ruining our economy, and I've stated this over and over again, is the border. You notice that. You, you, you notice that it's uh, that that this this this. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just so flustered, folks. I'm sorry. I mean, you know, there's so many issues that piss me off out here because America's getting flushed down the toilet. But but the, but this immigration problem is just a it's just a bad deal, okay? Because first of all, you've got the liberals trying to put a humanitarian spin on, on the immigration issue. You know, they, they they try they try to pull on your heartstrings and make you feel like some sort of selfish jerk ass if you try to acknowledge the fact that these people are in this country illegally. They try to make you feel like some sort of a, 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 a of a, a non humanitarian jerk, you know. And the actuality is, and the real, the reality of it is, is that these people are bringing down the cost of labor. Why do you think we need an economic stimulus package? Because these people are bringing down the cost of labor, on top of which all the means of production, manufacturing, and textiles went out the country, went out to these communist China, it went out to Mexico, it went out to all these other foreign countries, and the only thing that we produce as American folks out here is entertainment and cheeseburgers. That's the only thing we produce. We don't produce anything else out here. And then the jobs that are available to Americans out here, we've got to compete with these 20 million illegal immigrants that are in here illegally, that are, that are being paid under the table, that are, that are given a quarter of the wages that the average American person should be getting. And then we wonder why we need an economic stimulus package, folks. And this is why it is. I mean, it's sad. And I agree. You know, Roscoe Phil in here in the, in the chat room says we need a president with a set of balls and says it how it is. We need it. But we're not going to get one, Roscoe. We're on a slippery slope already to, to the new socialist communist America. And I've stated this on uh, previous shows. We are now in a new transition of power. And that transition of power is a quasi-communist, socialist-type country. And if you don't believe me, you just wait to whoever's elected president. I don't give a, I don't give two rats asses who's elected president. Whether it's John Turncoat McCain, no, if it's uh, Hillary Rotten Clinton, Barack Hussein Obama, it doesn't really matter who's the president because we're going to get the same thing. We're going to get more government bureaucracy. We're, we're going to get more taxes implemented on us. We're, we're going to get more and more government regulation, more government in our faces. This is all we're going to get either way. It doesn't matter. Uh, Roscoe Phil says if we get Hillary, we're screwed. It doesn't matter. We're screwed anyway, Roscoe. I mean, we should really be wary about where our country's headed because all these people are liberals, all of them. All of them are liberals. It doesn't matter who you put in that office. John McCain, the only thing that's making him Republican is that he thinks he's pro-life, but I don't believe it. He thinks he's pro-life, and he thinks he's some sort of a maverick when it comes to the war. Oh, yeah. You know, he's talking about extending the war into Syria and Iran and Pakistan, which not, I'm not really against. But at the same time, the whole concept of us going out into Iraq, the whole concept for us going out to Afghanistan is to implement the seeds of democracy in these parts of the country. And I don't understand how we, as American folks, can go out. I don't understand how we can go out and implement democracy when we're going to lose democracy right here in America. That's what we're going to do. We're going to lose democracy right here in America. So I don't like McCain as far as I can throw the man. 
And by the way, did you see McCain and uh, the Mormon? I forgot his name. Oh, uh, Romney. Romney. You, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, did you see Romney embrace John McCain? I mean, it looked like legitimately Romney was on a toilet taking a constipated dump when he was out there endorsing McCain. And McCain, I mean, they didn't even look at each other in the face. And you see, I mean, is this the Republican Party? This is the Republican Party. It's ridiculous. Absolutely sickening to me, and I really don't know. I mean, I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm confused, folks. I'm a man without a party. I was a lifelong Republican until the Republicans have embraced liberalism. Because uh, every Republican that was on the ticket, with the exception of Duncan Hunter, with the exception of Fred Thompson, they were all a bunch of liberals. And the Republican Party shut out any true conservative from getting on the Republican ticket. And now what we're going to see is more government regulation, man. I mean, don't these Republicans see that? And this is why the Republicans now hate me on the Blog Talk Radio Network. This is why they hate me. They hate me because I am telling conservatives not to contribute to the, to the communist uh, socialist transition that we're getting into. And that, what I mean by that is don't vote for any of these people. Don't vote for any of them. Uh, you know, when it comes to the presidential election... Uh, take a take a pee on it because it's not even worth it. Don't contribute to the socialists of America. Don't do it. Don't do it. And Roscoe Phil's talking about you know politicians pass bills without us knowing it. You're damn right they do. You're damn right. And you want to know why they're doing it? It's because we are seeing the transition of power into socialism, the dissolution of the American family. This is what we're seeing, folks. And it's easier to take over a country with socialism and communism. It's easier to take over a country when there is no family. When there's a bunch of dependent people with about five or six, seven different kids in a single parent home. I mean, it's easier to take over a country of that manner. It's easier to go ahead and ration out money to the American people and be a quasi-socialist government. It's easy to do that. It's not easy when you got the, the, the family out here. Because families actually want to work for a living. They want to take care of themselves. They want to go out and say, hey, look, I don't need no subsidy, okay? I don't need to go out and get some damn government cheese and welfare, food stamps. All right? I mean, I want to take care of my wife. I want to take care of my children. And if it takes going out and working 15 hours a day, well, I'm going to do it. Because the, uh, the family gives people the motivation to go on. It gives them the motivation to wake up in the morning and say, Hey, I'm going to go out and work. But when you have the social norm of single-parent families out here, and I'm not talking about single-parent families with just one or two children, folks. It seems to me like most of these females, particularly in the younger generations, are becoming baby factories. I mean, it's not uncommon nowadays to see, you know, women, women under 25 years old with about three or four kids. And no father. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I mean, you know, from multiple partners. And it's easy to take over the country when you have the majority of those people that want welfare, that want the government cheese, that don't want to go out and work. Because they don't. They don't want to go out and work. And what's unfortunate about this economy is that even those that want to go out and work can't work. Because they're competing with a bunch of illegal, I illegal immigrants that are devaluing the cost of labor. So how are you going to compete? I mean, the, the, you know, I don't understand why more people aren't getting up mad about it. You want to know why they're not getting up mad about it? Because they want socialism, folks. I mean, you can see it in both parties. Obviously, you know, the people on the left always wanted this socialist garbage. All right? I mean, they always wanted this socialist garbage. But now the, the Republicans have accepted it. I mean, 
I, I just couldn't believe it's CPAC, okay? Uh, CPAC is a, is a uh, conservative org, uh, like a conservative group that meets yearly, and it's actually a consortium of groups that it's like a convention, you know, it's like a conservative convention, and it's comprised of all these conservative groups, you know, uh, you know, uh, saving the American Family Group, the Heritage Foundation, you know, conservative conservatives, and then when I heard them sit here and try to shove down my hole. At CPAC, they, they were shoving down my hole that I have to vote for McCain to stay loyal to the party. Uh, McCain is a liberal, folks. Don't you understand that? Look at, look, at, look at the bills he's passed. McCain-Feingold, which is an unconstitutional bill anyway. And Feingold being one of the most liberal pieces of garbage on the other side of the aisle. McCain-Lieberman, Lieberman being the 2000 vice presidential candidate for the Democrats. McCain Kennedy. Well, we all know Ted Kennedy, that bloated, drunkard piece of trash. We all know that. And this is what I'm talking about. Every piece of legislation that John McCain has passed has put more and more bureaucracy, more and more government in our faces. It's really sad. It's really, it's really pathetic. And Roscoe Phil's talking about we need concealed weapons over here. I believe he's in Illinois. Uh, we have concealed handguns over here in Texas. You, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, that's the only thing. That's the only good part about Texas that you can go around with, 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 with a, you know, with a nice big stainless steel piece of uh, deadly machinery right on the hip there. You know, I mean, I, I, that's what I love about Texas, a concealed handgun law. That's why you're not going to see too many people out here committing too much crime out in broad daylight because somebody will pull out a gun and put a few holes in their body. And that's the way it should be. That's exactly the way it should be. I'm not going to sit here and allow people to just go ahead and and, 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 and take pop shots at us. You're, you're, you're damn right. I mean, you're damn right. I think we need to put guns in more law-abiding citizens' hands. I'm all for uh, my right to bear arms. And that's all there is to it. And you should too, folks. I, I, I urge everyone to go out and get a, get a firearm. Everyone out there. For your own protection. For your own safety. Anyway, folks, you can get back to me here. The number six four six six five two four eight six nine. I think we got a caller. We're going to go ahead and take a call. Eight one five area code. You're on the air. Hey, how's it going, Ghost? This is Roscoe. How you doing there, Roscoe? Hey, man, we're totally on the same page. This government we have right now is so crazy. I, I live thirty minutes away from where the Northern Illinois University shootings happened, and. I wish to God we had a concealed weapons permit here. Absolutely, and let me tell you, had there been, you know, some people in there that had a concealed gun, they would have been able to, you know, fight back, you know? I mean, they they wouldn't have been so helpless. And I, I don't mean helpless in a bad way. I mean, you're just going to school. But, I mean, if you had the opportunity to carry a firearm, I think that, you know, just as, just like in West Virginia, just like in this recent shooting, I think there there would have been less casualties and uh, you know, we, they would've, there would have been a less uh, l- less of a problem, if in my view. I mean, then again, you know, the, the debate is is that you know you could cause more of a problem with crossfire and that sort of thing. But what? What are you, are you just supposed to sit there and allow somebody to shoot you because he went off his rocker? Absolutely, uh, I I feel the same way. It's my parents moved down to Florida. They live up here in Illinois. And uh, my dad took a class down there uh, for concealed weapons, and my dad's always been NRA, you know, pro-gun. But the, the, the problem is, is the crime rate in Florida has dropped significantly as far as home invasions, rape, uh, carjackings, and whatnot, because the people who are – they're going to think twice before they try to do anything to you. They don't know whether you've got a gun or not, so they're going to think twice about screwing around with you or not. And you can protect yourself, and that's the nice thing. It's no 911, wait 20 minutes for the cops to come and take care of you. 
You start yeah. defending yourself then and there. And, and you know, I, I'm not too happy with the beat cops, you know, and I wanted to talk about that on a future show, but since you brought it up, you know, a lot of these beat cops, uh, and remember, beat cops come from the general public. Now, I, I like law enforcement. I, I've always, I've never committed any crime. I've never been arrested. But... I'm starting to see more and more that these beat cops are starting to treat people that are innocent, and, and when they run their names and realize that they have a clean rap sheet, you know, they give people with clean records more of a hard time than they do these hardened criminals. Yep, the criminals have got more rights than we do. You come, I mean, and, break, you come and break into my house and go through the window and wind up, uh, you know, getting bit by my dog, I get sued because I don't have a beware of dog sign that p could possibly be vicious animal in my house. They've got more rights than we do. And, and on top of that, sir, uh, what we have here is, and I've seen it, all right, I have seen it with my own eyes. You've got, you know, these, you know, whether it's drug addicts, prostitutes, uh, uh, whatever, whatever their crime forte is. Whenever they run in with these cops, and the cops know them already, you know, the, these people that are in and out of the system, they already know how to manipulate it. Mm -hmm. You know, once the cops get a hold of them, they're like, oh, it's you again. Well, just don't do it next time. Let's not, let's make sure we don't catch you again on the street. But when it comes to somebody who just gets stopped for a traffic ticket or, or, or something of that nature, you got these cops, once they run the name and realize that they can't bust these people for anything because they have clean records or law-abiding citizens, in my view, I think a lot of these police officers give these people more of a hard time and try to provoke them into doing something so that they can put them in the system. Absolutely. And I believe that these – that I don't know if it's it's a goal. I don't know if they're told to do this. But I, I, I always thought that if you're a law-abiding citizen, that the, the police should respect you that much more. And it seems like the complete opposite. I mean, they give more breaks. They give, they, they give more respect to these hardened criminals that go in and out of the system than they do – Law-abiding citizens that happen to be in a, in, in a bad situation, whether it's a speeding ticket, traffic ticket, parking ticket, whatever the case might be, or, or, or you're uh, trying to go into a damn football game or something of that nature, I mean, it seems to me like we're the damn enemy. Yep. And, there, and half the cops, I'm, I'm, I love, you know, I've got a lot of family that are cops and whatnot. Sure. But so many of them are corrupt and crooked themselves, cheating on their wives while their wives are at home, um, taking money out of evidence we've got a lot of problems in the state of illinois and you know you, you just saw it today on tv that one cop who just got uh indicted guilty and all that for killing his girlfriend and the baby there's so many so many cops that are coming out of the woodwork right now that the either the internal uh Internal departments you know i forget what it's called or what yeah internal affairs that doesn't yeah, they don't they don't I mean, bust anything it's just, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. It's sickening. And, you know, I've told my kid, and I'll tell you right now on the air, my kid goes to a grade school up here in northern Illinois, right on the border of Wisconsin. Uh -huh. And they were taught that when that, you know, the, uh, where was it, that, that, the college before NIU where the guy went into the Yeah, class, Virginia Tech. Yeah. They were told that if somebody comes into the school you go to the back of the classroom and you group up in the corner of the classroom. And I asked my son, I said, well, don't you guys have windows that are only like three feet off the ground and they open up to like a three-by-three three area? He goes, yeah. I go, you don't listen to any of those teachers or anybody. You go out that window and you start running. You don't sit there and cower in a corner and let somebody come in here with a gun. You get the hell out of that building. I can't believe that they advise, you know, students to, uh, I guess, be easier uh, bullet fodder uh, for some crazed gunman. I mean, I mean, uh, the first thing you'd want to do is get the hell out of there. Exactly, and they've got tons of access. I mean, they're only... Two and a half, three feet, or like three feet off the ground. Open up the window and book. Get out of there. They've got woods all in the. It's just, it's crazy. Uh, yeah, you know. and this is what I, this is why I'm saying. I mean, we're we're heading more and more into a socialist society, in my view. I mean, uh, and and this is what I was getting into about you know the dissolution of the American family. I mean, the reason it's it's a systematic uh, dissolution, decimation, and I think it's been purposely done. So that they can weed out this socialist system, and, and like I stated uh, about George Bush, I thought he was a great president. I still think he kind of is, but I mean, this stimulus package is just 
uh, to me, it's, it's rather frightening to me. Because that's a slippery slope on down to socialism. I don't care what anybody says about it. I'm sure everybody needs the money. Don't get me wrong. Right. But, I mean, the bottom line is is that there's, also, there's probably going to be another stimulus package and then another one. Then it's just going to be expected. And once it's expected, that's socialism. And, yeah. and, and the bad part about it is instead of giving us money, why don't, you, why don't you take away money from those folks that are leaving the means of production out of America and putting it in China or, or in Mexico and bring some of those manufacturing jobs back to America so people can actually go out and work? Absolutely. They should give, instead of the stimulus package, they should give the United States uh, – own businesses in the United States that are produced, manufactured, they should give them tax cuts or benefits to stimulate them to get more production out the door, hire more people. And this bull crap with, let's hand out these third and fourth, these third and fourth generation welfare people, where that's all they know. My granddaddy stayed at home and uh, got welfare checks, got free health care, got uh, free food, and this and that. That's all they know. That's yeah. all they know. And, and, and they're going to keep getting the money. Every time they're going to keep getting the money, and it's a generation thing. And it, it's, it's, it's starting be to become more and more prevalent, too. It's not – I mean, you've got those folks that have always been in the system, but you're getting more and more people draining the system. And on top of which, we've got immig- 20 million immigrants – that are also reaping the benefits of the welfare state oh, and the welfare system, and they're not paying any taxes. So, I mean, legitimately, this is what's also breaking us as far as our national debt is concerned. Uh, I mean, I think that we need a president that needs to just go ahead, and we're not going to get one. I mean, all these people are all liberals. They all want more spending. They all want more government bureaucracy. They all want more government regulation, and I really feel sorry for the future. I think within the next four years, I wouldn't be surprised if the Constitution was – Null and void. You know what? Too much got. Uh, you know, I'm really starting to get upset now too. And oh, hey, I'm on, same, I'm on the same page as you, and I hope your show is rated mature. Oh, no, yeah, you can go ahead and say what you want. I'm sick and goddamn tired of the amount of flipping bloodshed that was given for this country, the Revolutionary War, for our freedom, independence. And then we've got World War One, World War Two, the bloodshed and how America was all united and gung-ho. The economy was good. We worked together. People went down there to fight for their country. And it's the complete opposite now. It's what the hell is the United States going to do for me? What am I going to get for free? What handouts am I – I don't get – screw this. Yeah, and you know, I, and, I, and, I, and I hate to quote a Democrat, but this was a brilliant man. You know, John F. Kennedy, he said it the most eloquently. It's not what your country can do for you, it's what you can do for your country. But the bottom line is, is that nobody's going to do anything for their country anymore because they want their country to give them everything. I mean, it's, it's really sad. I mean, I don't understand why not more people are having a cow about this, so to speak. I mean, I'm being chastised by Republicans because I won't support John McCain. You know, the, 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 the name of this program used to be called True Conservative Republican Radio, but then when I realized that John McCain was going to get the nomination, a blatant liberal, a blatant person who likes to abuse his authority, who abuses his power, um, because I won't vote for this man, now I'm the bad guy because I believe in freedom. I believe in, you know, you know less what? government. What, what's that? We, we need more people like you, more people who aren't afraid to speak up and say how it is, and if they get slammed and this and that, this is the real me, and this is what I believe in. And if we had presidents who are like that, I think they'd be a lot more respected, and I think a lot more people would be willing to go to bat for them. In the race now, you've got, you know, we've got until November, until the election time. They're going to change their opinions three or four times and go back and forth. Yeah, I believe in uh, abortion. Then it's going to be, no, I believe in mothers. They're going to, they're puppets. They're going to do whatever the polls show. This is what is going to favor you. We, we could get this group of minority to back you up in this and that. And I know. I, that's ridiculous. That, that is the most ridiculous uh, garbage. You know, the, the way the mainstream media is trying to view the, the country. Uh, oh, you know, they're, they're up with Hispanics. They're down with women. They're, you know, I mean, who cares about this demogra- demographic crap? I mean, the bottom line is, is you're either for freedom or for socialism, and it's obvious the majority of America at this point, given the uh, uh, the 
the candidates that have been nominated uh, for presidential uh, candidacy, it's obvious that this, this country is just submitted to liberal uh, socialism. Absolutely, and the people don't see it. I think the generation nowadays, it's, they're lazy, they don't watch the news, they don't care. They've got no worth ethics anymore. Their family values are just... And know, it, that, that's where anymore. it starts, sir. That's where it starts is family, because if you don't have a family, then what, what's going to motivate you to go, get up and work anyway? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. if, you have, if you have no, uh, no uh, wife that you have to support or, or children you have to support, well, then why are you going to wake up in any way when you're going to have the government give you your, your sustenance? Yep, Absolutely. And, and that's where, and, and this is where, that's why I do this show is to try to save the American family. But every time I try to bring this subject matter up, I'm called a kook. I'm called some sort of a nut job, especially by these feminists out here who believe that it's woman liberation to go ahead and have like six different kids from six different fathers. They equate that to woman liberation. Yeah. And, and that's not woman liberation. That's oh, being you know, a whore. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's a sl- sl- philanderous whore bag is right. <laughs> And, 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 you know, I, I say those harsh words all the time, and, you know, I, I, I try to bring up these subject matters so it can burn some fire into some people, because I don't believe that everybody is like this. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I think that, you know, we have a media that has influenced uh, everyone into believing that this is okay, but I remember a day when it was about, hey, you had to go out, you get your nails dirty, you work for what you had. I mean, that's why I'm a businessman. I didn't just have this given to me, man. I had to go out and work a good 20 years before I started my business. And, and, and that's what you have to do. And, and, but you see, I, I'm kind of worried that that's going to be uh, taken away from us here within the next four years. I mean, given the, the economic landscape and our political landscape. Well, you look at it, okay? You look at the USSR, communistic, now they're what? Uh, they're, uh, uh, who the hell knows what they are? Democracy or whatever. Now you look at Germany, you look at all over the place. These countries change. It might not be every 30 years. You're talking every 100 years, couple hundred years. The Romans fell. The Romans thought they were on top of the world. Now we've had the United States of America since 1776, and it... <laughs> I mean, it's sad to say, but, I mean, it's, there's going to be a time to where our nation is going to take a dump. I, it, it, we're already seeing it. I mean, as a matter of fact, it's these uh, bureaucrats in Washington that are selling us out to China. And I'm not particularly favorable towards China. I think China's the most grotesque country on the oh, face so of the planet. And, and, you know, I, I talked to a Chinese person from China on one of these Internet chat communities and I hope I didn't have the man executed because uh, uh, we were having a very good conversation. As a matter of fact, uh, China is actually teaching most of their, their population English. So we were able to, to, to co- conversate with each other. And, and, you know, he was so gun ho about his communist Chinese society and, you know, communism is great. And, 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 I, and I, I told him that I'm concerned uh, about him and, and his well-being and, and the Chinese people's well-being. And he goes, well, why do, you, why do you care about the Chinese people? Well, the reason I care about the Chinese people is because their oppression is only going to give a precedent for oppression of our government on us. Right. So, and I was saying that what you need to do is understand that your government is, is wrong, it's corrupt, it's bad. And then when he started just showing the slight bit of dissension, his Internet connection was shut off. Oh. So I hope, uh, you know, I'm... I hope I didn't get the man executed or jailed or thrown in a gulag or something. He's but getting the water treatment. Yeah, I, I know. I hope not. But I mean, that, that's where we're headed. And, and I, I, and just by us embracing communism, by sending all our means of production out there, by allowing a multinational corporation to have headquarters out in there, by allowing communist a communist society to enter into the free market system is just ridiculous. And that's why the American, the average American person is having a hard time making a living because, first of all, there's no jobs out here. And the reason there's no jobs is because we don't produce anything anymore. The only thing we produce is entertainment, which is the equivalent of uh, ridiculous movies that are coming out nowadays yep. and rap music yep. and, and, or cheeseburgers. That's the only thing that we're producing. And then, and then those jobs are being undercut by the illegal immigrants that are coming into this country and devaluing the cost of labor. I, I'm very concerned for America. We need to shut down our borders, man. We really do. We need yeah, to shut I, I, them down, and we need to 
We need to shut them down. We need more control, and it's bullshit. I don't know. Hey, do you ever see on the Internet there's a there's a, a guy who does the show. He's a big, fat Italian guy, uh, guy from Boston. Or the kid from Brooklyn? There, no, he's a big guy. He's probably in his early 40s, but he's on the same page as us, and he did an article about that it's bullshit that with the – uh, truck drivers, now that Mexican truck drivers can come up and start delivering all the goods, those jag, those jagoffs don't have to follow any of the state licensing and testing and processing because when you drive a truck across the street, you have to be licensed between certain states, and these guys don't need shit. They just drive right up and in, and they're taking all the, you know, I'm not Union, while well, he's complaining, all the union truck driving jobs are getting taken away, and these guys don't have to pay pay shit or do any of the classes or any of the training. They just get brought back, brought up and in. I know, and, and it's it's sad that, and I don't understand why more Americans aren't pissed off about this. I mean, they they're just embracing their own socialist uh, serfdom. It's because they don't have a voice. They're afraid to speak up. They're afraid to speak up because they care about what other people will think about them. They, they're and half of them are too goddamn lazy. I agree. Half of them don't they don't you know what's opening up a newspaper and reading a newspaper? What what the heck is that? I mean, even though half of it's are all you know biased shit and made up and but I mean, turn on the news. Look well, and, and not only that, on we have the the one of the greatest information tools at our fingertips the yep. internet absolutely where we can just go anywhere to to get our information to get our news gathering and yet what do these people do they 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 download pornography 24 hours a day yep they're out there on internet chat communities becoming a bunch of deviates i mean this is what this is what people are using this great tool that has been given to us this is what they're using it for yep and that's why I'm glad that, you know, uh, you got Blog Talk Radio Network out here allowing the individual to just go ahead and broadcast whatever they want. I mean, because that's what I do. I get up on here on a consistent basis and say these things, and it pisses people off. You should see the amount of hate mail I get in my email every day. It's all right, but you know what? If you can open up out of a, all the emails you get, maybe you open up the eyes to two or three people and said, you know what? This guy's making some valid points here. This is a little, yeah, yeah. This is a little, you know. It's it's good that you do it, and we need more people to do that because our founding fathers of this country had a voice. They stuck to it. They knew that they would be persecuted and killed if the English got a hold of them. They had plenty of of property. They were millionaires, owners of plantations in this country. Yet you got to. You got to see it at their point that, of course, they didn't want. It was to their best interest too, to get away from England with the taxes because these guys had plantations were making. You know, they were millionaires back in the days. But you know what? They went to bat for freedom. They knew that they could be killed. They started it up, and that's what we need more people like you. Absolutely, and let me tell you, the, the revolution uh, in 1776, or uh, that's when we won the revolution, right. that, that revolution in that time frame started off with 2% of the population of the original colonies. Yep. And, then it, and then it grew into the majority because, you know, bottom line is is everybody really wants freedom. But at this point, we've been so dumbed down by our education system. That's why I think we need to abolish public education. We've been so dumbed down by our education system. We've got uh, a boob tube of... of television of just absolute filth uh, that's just dumbing us down and that's why you don't have the amount of concern that i have and you have sir because these people don't know what's happening they're stupid Uh, and i hate to say that about american folks but maybe that'll piss a few off and maybe have them pick up a book or, or you know they don't even have to do that just google something google freedom do something the government wants you to be a sheeple it's obvious. What you, you know what? Little Timmy in the other classroom, he's got some great envisions, some great ideas. And all this. Yeah, he's a little hyper in class. Yeah, he's diagnosed with ADD and all that. But everything now is drug him up. You know how many great inventors, artists, even politicians were, had ADD? And it, they, they want to block them out. Put them in the back of the room, shut them up, put them in a comatose state, and it's the way how the government wants to be with us. 
It's, I, you know what? I elected you as a representative. And you know what? Barack Obama, which I didn't elect him, but Barack Obama hasn't done shit for the state of Illinois. He's been to the Springfield, Illinois, the capital, maybe a half a dozen times to put in his votes for the state. The little suckers off there doing his presidential po- policy and going around and, and smoozing and bruising and kissing the babies and giving them candy, and the guy hasn't done shit for Illinois. He's just been newly elected, and he's not even doing shit for us. And, and on top of which, uh, you know, he really doesn't have a premise. I mean, I don't, no, I, don't understand, I don't understand why everybody's mesmerized by this guy. I talked about this on my earlier shows like last month. I mean... Uh, all I know about this guy is that he wants change, whatever the hell that means, to change his pocket. And, and at the same time, the man wants to, to pull out of Iraq. He wants to open a dialogue with uh, Iran, which is responsible for oh, 75% yeah. of the world's terror. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, I re- what's that? It's, it's Barack Obama is incredibly intelligent behind a microphone. He sure. is an excellent speaker. George Bush is terrible. That guy can't speak. He can't. He stumbles. And blah, blah, blah. You, you know He's something, sir? Speaker. You know something, sir? I, I would, I would uh, challenge you to go out and, and go, or YouTube, uh, search for uh, the, the governor's debates of Texas. He used to be the governor of Texas. Right and and there, I, I don't I mean it's very eerie what happened to this man okay because when he was the governor of Texas believe it or not this man used to talk very articulately he never stuttered uh, he, it's just a complete contrast I mean uh, it's very eerie to me why this man is uh, you know seems to me so kind of inarticulate because he wasn't I mean and like I said if you ever have time go and, and YouTube a couple of uh, Governor Bush. Uh, debates, and you're going to be like, is this the same man? Right. And um, I, that kind of concerns me. I'm not going to make any speculations about that, but it is definitely a different person. Well, it's a couple of other things you brought up with Iran and this nuclear, you know, nuclear weapons, and they're saying it's only for, you know, their generators or whatnot for electricity and power and all that. So what do we do? When they say that they're not going to listen and they're going to put their nuclear programs into effect, do you know what we did? We What's gave that? them money to stop. Well, of we course. Gave them, we gave them money and said, well, what do you need in order for you not to have this nuclear you know, power in your hands or the patrol, whatever it is that they need to, to get, get the rods filled up? And they took the money. They of course. Money, and that's what we do. And, and that's what we do with North Korea. Yep. Give I mean, them what they want. I mean, you know, this is what they're doing. This is uh, international extortion. Yeah, absolutely. And and what I don't understand is is why that we why we fall for this garbage. I mean, uh, you know, I'm starting to think, you know, and I thought the war in Iraq and the war in Afghanistan were great causes. I really did. But at this point, now that we're seeing our our constitution being wiped on the dairy air of most of these liberals. And now, now that I see, you know, quasi socialism and communism being implemented in America today, I, I don't, I don't really think that we need to be out there anymore. I mean, I hate to say that, and we lost a lot of, lot of great young men out there and women uh, in these wars. And let me tell you, I cherish their souls. They're, they're true patriots for going out there and fighting for the cause. But the whole purpose of going out to Iraq, the whole purpose of going out to Afghanistan was to sow the seeds of democracy. I don't think we can sow the seeds of democracy when democracy is being decimated here in the supposed homeland of democracy. Yep. And um, it, it's just, it's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's starting to become, I believe, a politician's war right now. We've got so much money invested, we can't pull out now. We can't lower down the you know amount of troops we have out there. We're fighting people that almost like in Vietnam they were third world and which these guys pretty much are primitive and they're using gorilla you know with the with the bombs onto the side of the road. It's these fucking people have been fighting for what three thousand years since Christ or whatnot. And we're going to go in there, and we're going to change everything around, and we're going to make it perfect. It's in their heads when these guys are born to hate Americans, to hate 
uh, democracy. Absolutely. It's 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 a no win situation, man. No, uh, it, it really is a no win situation. I, I'm suggesting this. First of all, we've incurred a lot of debt and a lot of death with these wars, and at the same time, we are losing democracy here in America. We're losing it. I mean, all these uh, candidates, I don't care who you put up as the president anymore. I mean, John Turncoat McCain, Hillary Rotten Clinton, Barack Hussein Obama, it doesn't matter who's up there. They're going to put more regulation. They're going to put more government in our faces. And we're seeing a transition into a quasi-socialist communist government via the United States of America. And I don't understand how the United States is going to be the freedom fighters for democracy throughout the international community when they're taking away democracy from from us right now. Yep, absolutely. You you want to know another thing that got taken away from me at tax time? What's that? I did my, I did my taxes, state of Illinois, and I'm doing the where they send the direct deposit into my checking account. Okay. Okay. I got a refund direct deposit. I had to fucking give them my two forms of ID with my checking account number, routing account, all this. My two forms of ID. I said, why do you? Why do I got to give you ID? You've got all my fucking information there, all my W-2s, my Social Security, my birth, my place to work, every single thing. I said, why do you need my IDs? It's for the, uh, Illin- or the Patriot Act that was passed. Uh. We, need, we, need, we need more physical ID proof that this is actually you coming to do your taxes. I go, are you fucking kidding me? I said, wow. you know what? This is bullshit. I said, you know, it's bad enough. I got to pay the taxes. I got to pay on on bullshit like the Patriot Act and handing out the wine and cheese to. It's just, it's it's starting to get really old, man. Who's got more rights here? The illegals that come in here and they get get pregnant and they get they get their child's delivered in the hospitals and don't pay. It's a write off. They don't have insurance. But yet I work my ass off. And I've got a house and all that, and I get screwed. Of course, and that's the way it is. You, you know that this is the way the government is structuring it now. This all comes down to liberalism. I mean, they are structuring it to where hardworking people are finding it harder to even live than those that are basically uh, obliging themselves to getting handouts from the government. Yep. And, and at the same time, with the dissolution of the American family and the prevalence of single-parent families, and not just single-parent families on the one or two kids sense, I'm talking single-parent families with four, five, six, seven kids sense. Yep. I mean, they're, they're giving these people $2,000 a kid. A kid! Yep. And, and, and this is what we're perpetuating. We've got a, a government that is embracing this socialism. And, and I, just, I, I just can't stand for this, uh, this Republican Party anymore. I can't stand for this government anymore because we are being indoctrinated into accepting this quasi-socialism, and I don't understand why more people aren't upset about it. I mean, can you, I know that maybe we're dumbed down and they don't care and that sort of thing, but can there, can there be another reason? I mean, do you think that all the drugs that they're giving all these poor kids, you know, they're knocking them up with Prozac and whatever the hell else... I mean, do you think that that's, I mean, they're just bowing down to their own serfdom? You know, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I think it's a combination of the public schools. I think it's a combination of families. There's no more family values, no more sitting down at the dinner table, eating, discussing what's going on. The, it, it's, it's a lot of things, and it's, it's really disgusting. And I don't know about you, but there's somebody who I want to tell you about who I listen to every morning. And he's syndicated, and his name's, uh, it's not a plug, but he's on the same page as us. And if he were running for president, I'd vote for him in a minute. His name's uh, Mancow Muller. Oh, yeah, I know Mancow. Mancow, and he's on the same page as us. He's disgusted with the, he was straight Republican, um, you know, just uh, against the, you know, the free handouts by the government and against, you know, it, a, a lot of the things that we agree on. And uh, he's on Fox News in the morning. He does a couple segments, you know, every morning he does that. But, I mean, it's people like you and him that hopefully will start stirring it up, waking up some eyes. And I'll tell you something, man, if you ever ran I, I'd vote for you in a second. Well, I appreciate it, uh, but let me tell you something. I don't think I'd be very popular 
because, uh, you know, if I was, uh, you know, somebody who embraced the fact if I wanted to give 5000 per kid as opposed to 2000 then I'd get everybody and their mother voting for me. But that's just that's just not how it is. As a matter of fact, we got another call here. Let's just go ahead and chime in with them, see what they got to say. Uh, 419, you're on the air. Uh, hi, Ghost. Uh, this is Snorted. I spoke with you, I think, about a week ago. That's right. Um, I just wanted to call in and just say I'm listening from work, so I'm, I'm actually guest number 600 or whatever it says. 600. Oh, well, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Just a little disgusted with where our society's headed, but what else is new? It's, it's unbelievable. I was talking to my mom one day. It's like you were wondering why, like, no one really gets it and they don't understand how important everything is. I was talking to my mom, and keep in mind that my mom dropped out of school in tenth grade, but she's really, really smart. She's not a dumb person. Hey, you don't have to. You don't have to be involved with the oh. public education system to be a smart person. Believe me. As a matter of fact, yeah. uh, most of the most of the folks I come across that either dropped out, got kicked out, or whatever the case might be, are actually more uh, more common sense folks than the actual intellectuals that are being yeah, put out by the universities. Oh, I agree, one hundred percent. Because I know that. She was. I was talking to her one day, and she was getting a beep, and so she let me go. And about an hour later, she called me back because one of her friends wanted to talk to her while she was watching Deal, of no, Deal or No Deal on TV. It's like the things that are events in people's lives is really scary to me now. Yeah, I mean, the, the Deal or no, no Deal, I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, yes. it's one thing like Jeopardy. You know, I like watching Jeopardy. I mean, hey, you, you learn something. Mm-hmm. But you're picking out a damn suitcase. <laughs> uh, uh, can somebody understand? And, and, and then you've got people talking about strategies. for oh, Strategies? Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for picking out a damn suitcase? <laughs> yeah. uh. I agree. I mean, it's just like, the, like you said, the dumbing down is absolutely mind-boggling, and it's really, really scary, because I still think people understand that we're living in a time, like, in the next two months, we all have to start beginning the process of getting the real ID, along Uh with the driver's license. Absolutely, the national ID card. It's like, hello, is anyone like... (laughs) Well, did you guys hear what's coming out next? What's that? We're, We're getting all microchipped. Oh well, we're you know, be getting it placed underneath our wrist, and for groceries, food, anything, we microchip it, and it's linked also to our uh, our checking account and whatnot. And it, it's just this is crazy. It, it, yeah, you can kill me before that happens. But exactly. I, I, I know, and that's what and that's what the Nazis did to the Jews. They said, "Tell us what guns you have." And, you know, just, just write them down and send them into us. No, you know, just, just, you know, like nothing. And what, three, four years later, whatnot, when Hitler and whatnot, they knew exactly who had all the guns. They went in their houses and took them. We're the Star of David, you know. It's, this is ridiculous. It, it, it's People really scary. On the wall? It's really scary what's happening to America. And that's why I've pretty much, I, I mean, I hate to say this, I guess I'm a radical now as a lifelong conservative Republican. But now I'm a radical because I just want I want our country back, man. That's all I want. I want I want the American uh, Constitution back. And, but, but you know what? It's not going to happen. You know why? Because the independent or the Green Party or the radicals, you know, who are going to be running for president, they don't have the stout or the exposure in getting their name out there, even though they make valid points and they could. And the money isn't there. The, the money isn't there for their political um, race. Yeah, and at the same time, mainstream media is not even going to oh, give absolutely. them time of day. Absolutely. No, no way. It's like you have to be pretty much uh, a member of the CFR to even be heard anymore. Absolutely. It's a really, it's absolutely, I mean, I, a lot of, I mean, it's like everything, like the rumors that have gone on in the black community, are starting to come out and they're starting to be true. You know, it's like everyone is, it's not everyone's waking up, but it's like now we kind of see that there is a pattern to the way things have been going, especially for the past, you know, six years since 9 well, seven years almost, since 9-11. Sure, yeah. There's like a pattern that's been building, I think, steadily and like at a very rapid pace since you go back to the Carter administration. 
I mean, it's just like it's so much more than people know, but it's like they feel that they get to go to work every day, they can eat what they want, that everything's good, but it's like when they look at the fine details of their lives, they're being controlled by taxes, they're controlled by so many elements of the government that it's just like, wake up, please. Uh, yeah, and why do you think I get up on here on a consistent basis now? I'm starting to come up on here more frequently and hope <laughs> and, and hope that a couple of people will start waking up and realizing. I mean, they don't have to take action. They just got to know that this is happening, man. Stop denying it. Stop denying that we are seeing the systematic destruction of, the, of America via a quasi-communist socialist uh, situation out here. I mean, this stimulus package that Bush is putting out, it's a slippery slope down socialist uh, slipping slide. Absolutely. It's like, it's, it's money that in the next couple of weeks, I'm looking at the stock market down, I see that it's down again for two consecutive days. It's eventually going to be money that's not worth anything. And people need to realize that one of, like, a lot of investors that used to, you know, populate, like, major cities like New York, and L.A., they're starting to leave because they know what's coming. They yeah, they're know. actually moving to Europe. Yeah, I think you may be talking about the same story that I'm looking at on Yahoo, that one of the biggest investors, of, he was like a big investor in the city of New York, where he had like a lot of you know really nice mansions that are within the city, so you know they have to be really nice. And now he's selling them and going ahead and going to Japan, and there's another one going to, to Europe. It's like people are leaving because they know what's next. And it's like the rest of us are sitting here, we're making $20 an hour, $15 an hour, $8 an hour, and we think we have the life, but when these big corporations start to leave, it's like they're leaving us with nothing. We're on the verge of a third world country, and I wish people would wake up and realize it. I mean, at the very minimum, at the very minimum, I think that the people should demand from the government, and and this may be a selfish interest, but... Hey, we're already in Iraq, all right? We've already paid with a lot of blood and a lot of money. I think that we need to demand from this Iraqi parliament or whatever the hell it is out there, we need to demand from them that we need some revenues off of those oil fields that they hold so sacredly out there so that they can pay back some of the debt that we've incurred uh, during this war because that's that's basically what's bringing our American dollar down. Absolutely, and I think that it's... I think that there's people getting revenue from that oil is just not coming down to the common person, and that's where it's just not fair. And it's, not, it's how we're gradually and well, not even gradually anymore. It's like it's going so fast at this point that it's going to be hard to control. That we're getting towards that only the elite are benefiting when we go to war. Because I don't even I, I know this is probably a really unpopular opinion, but at first I was really all about the Islamo fascists. I thought that they were really like but I know that they exist. I'm not saying that they don't exist. Sure. But the root of this war for me is becoming more and more about oil and furthering the agenda of the Council of Foreign Relations. Well I mean, it's like I'm really trying to feel that it's about getting Paris. I really am. But it's like for me it's like when I feel when I see that my dollar I mean, I'm a, I'm single. I have no kids. I make forty one thousand dollars a year. For me, that should be enough, and it's not even close to being enough. Wow. I mean, I, I mean, it's like I live alone, and it's like I can't even make. I can barely make it. For me, so for me, it just seems. I mean, I don't spend ex, you know extravagantly. I mean, I have sure. very good credit. I, I have very good credit, so I don't spend a lot. But it's like. I should not be living hand to mouth the way that it is. I just got back from the store where orange juice for half a gallon is five thirty. I, I live in Illinois as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like five thirty for half a gallon of orange juice at Walmart. I mean, this is Walmart yeah. supercenter. This is not the corner convenience store that we're talking about. <laughs> like, I mean, it's I mean, not. It's not funny, but I mean, you know, geez. It's just like, how am I supposed to? If I had one kid, even one kid, I would be on the street. I mean, I couldn't make it. And even with one kid, I still wouldn't qualify for food stamps because you have to be, like, making $10,000 a year. To oh, yeah, and, and that's what I talk about. It, it, that's, that's what I'm talking about. This government is just perpetuating a quasi-socialist society. Oh, I mean, God. and here you are, uh, you know, and I commend you, by the way, for, for being single, no children. I mean, that's that's very hard to do in this society. Mm-hmm. But uh, I really commend you for that, and yet you're you're working hard. You know, you, you, it sounds like you're out there, you know, busting your hump. And 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 what are you getting for a reward? Well, you can't even get help from the government because, well, you have to be making nothing exactly. to be to to be. And look, I'm for helping folks. You know, they they make it 
they make it seem that I'm just a cold, callous individual that doesn't want to help people. I believe in workfare, not welfare. Absolutely. And, 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 if, and if somebody is going to go out and they need a helping hand, I, I don't mind t- my taxpaying dollars going out and helping them, but for a certain period of time. And then once they're on their feet, once they're uh, legitimate uh, working Americans again, well, then maybe we can just wean them off that assistance. Mm-hmm. But that's not what this government's about. This government is about to, about giving you help and keeping you there. Absolutely. Yep. That agree. way they, they've got to hold on you and they can control you. That's, that's it. They're, they're happy. They're getting their free handouts from the government, and mm-hmm. it's, you know, why do I need to investigate more into what's going on? No, I'm happy. I get my cable paid, my heat and whatnot. And I'll tell you something. The reason why I get so worked up over this as far as I believe that there are people that are out on bad times, out of work, that need help. Sure. It's, it's the second and third generation of them that don't know any better because mom and dad have done it. They do it. And they know the system better than anybody else. The Absolutely. problem that I have is, is I was 18 years old when I had my first kid. My wife was 17. Mm-hmm. I did everything on my own. I worked 65 to 70 hours a week. I bought my first house when I was 21. I've got two boys. I'm 31 right now, and I've had a house ever since I was 21. I worked my butt off. I'm putting my wife through college now, and I have never once, ever, taken a government handout. I well, had too much pride. I had too much of a family, of a mother and father who raised me as far as, you know what, it was my screw up. You know, I shouldn't, you know, I had, that's the situation I put myself in, but I wasn't going to put anybody else to where I needed handouts. I put myself in that situation. I'm going to work my ass off to get myself out, and I had pride. It was my father, my mother worked. We were, you know, we went to church, and it was – I had a lot to prove to people, and I wanted to do it. And I've been married now 11 years. I'm still with my – got kids, my two boys, and I've made it in this world where statistically I should have fallen apart and crumbled. Well, and I, co- I commend you. Have a, I, I'm have just going to say I commend you for that because uh, that's a rare – rare uh, thing in this day and age, sir, Absolutely. what you've done. And it's, you know, it, and that's where I really think that it falls on the parenting. I really do. And, you know, were my parents disappointed in me? Yeah. Did they say you know, I was supposed to go to college and do all this and that? My dad was a doctor. My mom was a nurse. And I did everything on my own. The only time I asked for help was once, and that's when my son needed open-heart surgery at four, four days old. My dad said, can I help you out? I said, i got to take about three weeks off of work, Dad. Um, can you pay for my apartment? And he said, yeah, sure. It's the only time. And it, it's just disgusting, man. Man, well, you know what? Uh, I, I congratulate you and commend you very highly, sir. I mean, it's... It's hard this, on, on, bo- on both you American folks that are just working hard and that are doing what what the average American person should be doing. And, and that's just working and, and, and making a better life for themselves and, and not worrying about how much I can get off of the government. You're exactly right. And the young lady on the phone right now, I commend her too. You know, oh, that's, yeah. you, you know that's great. You work. You're part of society. You're doing what you need to do. You go to work. You get your insurance. You get your benefits, you come home, you're a productive citizen. Absolutely. And I wish more people would feel, the, I guess, the sense of accomplishment when you've worked yourself up from where you, the odds are against you. But oh, you absolutely. Overcome that. But people have the sense of they always want to have this chip on their shoulder or they always want to play victim mm-hmm. when we all have our own control. And it's like it's just so frustrating when I look at just how everybody just takes advantage. I mean, I, I guess I do get my work ethic. I would say I get it from my mom and my dad as well, but more so my mom because she's always made the point to work ever since I was a kid. Right. So I think that I think that you have to be responsible, but it's like we're, we're creating this culture of people who, this entitlement culture, and what, they're, what they feel they're entitled to is not even their full potential. Exactly. Right. I mean, 
I mean, what, what's unfortunate about this day and age, and, and we're seeing it, I mean, you've got a media that's inducing people into believing that it, it's okay to go out and, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I, I hate to bring up pop culture, but pop culture is an influent, uh, a, a definite influential tool on our youth. Mm-hmm. And when you have, uh, you know, pop culture embracing the fact that it's okay to, you know, participate in the social ills and making them the social norm, it's okay to go ahead and, I remember back in the day, uh, you know, I, I, I raised a few sons in, in the 90s, and, you know, they went to high school during those times, and mm-hmm. uh, they were uh, really heavily, well, one of them was, not, not the other one, uh, one of them was really heavily induced into this gangster rap stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and, and and I'm not against gangster rap by any means. I mean, I think some of it was a legitimate outcry from the inner cities. Uh, uh-huh. But then you, you had uh, I, 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 this one group called Bone Thugs in Harmony. Yeah. Uh, which, you know, I, I like a couple of their songs. I'm not going to lie to you. But they had this song called First of the Month. Yes. You know, do you remember this song by any means? Yes, I, I remember that one. I, I think it was Chris Rock who called it a welfare carol. It, it, it's, it's, it, are you kidding me? I mean, it's the first of the month. I mean, that means it's the first of the month. They're, they're getting their welfare uh, welfare checks and then go out and spend it on 40s and, 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 and marijuana. I mean, this is what it says in the song. Yeah, absolutely. That's and, what the whole idea of the Yeah, you're absolutely right. And, and you see, and, and I, I've always lived in, a, in, a, in an affluent part of, of, of whatever town I've lived in, uh-huh. uh, because I've worked my ass off, let's put it that way. And um, you literally, I mean, when, when my, my son, he's a great citizen now. He's not, you know, he never fell victim to that, uh, that, that garbage because I, yeah. you know, I had to kick his ass a few times. But, I mean, uh, the, the bottom line is, is his friends created a whole subculture of supposed hood mentality in suburban America when they had no business participating in this type of activity. These pe- I mean, people that participate in activity like that are subjugated via poverty, via, you know, other circumstances that are beyond their control, and that's why they are forced to live in such, uh, in such uh, situations that, that are described in gangster rap. And uh-huh. to see pop culture influence a, a whole sect of society that has no business participating in this Creating, you know, a ghetto lifestyle. I don't, I don't want to say ghetto, but like a gangsterish lifestyle in in, in suburban America is just uh, unbelievable. How the influence is is the point of, of this description. It's the influence of pop culture. It just goes to show you that it's a big influence, and unless the American family it, it, it just comes together once again and we start saving it. That's the only way that's going to save our children from all these outside influences is by having the family buckle down. I mean, I had to buckle down on my son and tell him, look, you idiot, you're not raised in this mentality. I mean, you, you want to go out and, and, and see, and I took them out uh, to impoverished areas, and I dumped them off of the car, and I said, here, you want to live? Live out there. <laughs> and he called me up and said, get me the hell out of here. <laughs> Oh, goodness. That's, I do like what my sister did with my two nephews who were really, they're in, really into, you know, I guess um, gangster rap or rappers just in general. And we went to the west side of Chicago, which doesn't bother me at all because I used to be a social worker, so I'm familiar with. Sure. I, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> hey, I, I complete. I am not uneasy around impoverished areas, believe me. Yeah, absolutely. Because we went there and. When we went inside the restaurant, I mean, the other caller may be familiar with um, MacArthur's restaurant. I'm not sure if you are or not. But it is in the, the, I get the ghetto, the inner city of Chicago. We went over there, and they stayed in the car. They're like 10 and 8 years old. They ducked down in the back seat so nobody could see them. Now, keep in mind that they're black kids, and they should be feeling comfortable regardless if they are. But they know what that element is like, that when they're not familiar with I mean, these are kids that live in uh huge, you know, five, six-bedroom house, and they love gangster rap, but when they're put in that element, it's like people just don't realize what they're biting off, and they're biting off more than they can chew on in a lot of cases. And things that really don't apply to their life, <laughs> I mean, as it exists at this point. I mean, you can like the music, but don't really get in, enthralled in the culture, I guess. Yeah, and that's another thing. You know, the, the gangster rap culture, which is a farce, yeah. You know, it's a farce, and I believe that it's the liberal media that is inducing not only just our children. I mean, you've got older men in their 30s, 40s 
that are obliging themselves to this uh, gangster rap lifestyle and or culture or whatever the case might be, and it's just ridiculous. And it's only perpetuating the welfare state. It's it's I, what it's what sells. What mm-hmm. sells? MTV, uh, VH1, your radio. What sells? That's what they want. If they can make a buck off of it, that's what they're going to do. And the young lady on the phone, I know Chicago very well, and I know exactly what you're talking about, and I commend you for being a social worker because they get paid shit. And they bust their butts, and they bring home all of the worries and fears on their shoulders because they're worrying about other kids that they deal with. So I do commend you. That is a very tough job. Thank you. (laughs) But, yeah, it's like it's – It's not only just a media, I guess, creation. I think in the beginning, when you had, like, N.W.A., Dr. Mm -hmm. Dre, like, their very first albums in the early 90s. Now, I think those were genuine albums talking about the the culture at that time. Sure, sure. They they started it. They were the beginners. You know, now you've got all the followers now. Exactly. Yeah, that's what it gets to where they realize that this is another good distraction that we can use now, so let's continue to manufacture it and use people who aren't really from the ghetto like 50 Cent. I mean, he's from the suburbs. Yeah, absolutely, and, and I hate 50 Cent, and if anybody happens to know 50 Cent, you tell him I'll meet him anywhere and beat his ass because he is a tool. He, he, is, he is a disgusting human being. I know for a fact, and anybody who's, who knows uh, Curtis Jackson uh, via doing any kind of research will know that this man is a fraud. He's never lived any of the garbage that he spews out, and yet he's one of the most successful rap artists in, in rap history uh, based on this uh, you know, product uh, packaging of him being like, he's like a boy band gangster rapper. Yep. You, can put, you can put Kane West on that, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, all, all yeah. those, all, all of them. All of it, when yeah. th- when it happened in Louisiana and Bush blew up the levees to to kill out all the black people. I mean, it's just it's just I, it, I don't know. It's very frustrating. It, it really is. I mean, because like, look, uh, I I just think our pop culture has a lot to do with shaping our our current and future generations. And, and then to see, you know, pop culture, which is ran by, remember, this is liberal Hollywood, folks. This is, mm-hmm. you know, people that are, you know, these richy liberals like, you know, old Steven Spielberg, you know. Did you hear about Steven Spielberg pulling out as being a creative director for the Chinese Olympics? Oh, I didn't wow. hear that. Yeah, well, he pulled out not because uh, not because China has the one-child abortion policy or, or kills every uh, every girl that's that's – born in their country, or not because they're politically oppressing Chinese. No, the Darfur situation. Okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I don't understand why these liberals are getting behind Darfur so much when, mm-hmm. I mean, granted, it's genocide happening out there. It's, it's a horrible situation. Don't get me wrong. Okay. I, I'm not trying to be insensitive of that fact. But, I mean, Spielberg, you're collecting money from a communist government that kills every girl that's born in China, I mean, you know, they break their heads open if they find out it's a girl, you know. I mean, you know, they force abortions. It's, it's, it, you're absolutely right. It's called, in my mind, a hypocrite. Exactly. You know, and, and, and he presses his, the Jewish Holocaust and, and, and the Jews and all this and, and the Holocaust, and he donates all the money to the Holocaust museums and all that, and his people were persecuted too. Exactly. It's, it's, and I, I just think that instead of making the claim that, you know, China's not doing enough for Darfur, why don't you come out, just have some balls, Spielberg, which you don't, and say, look, China, you're, you're an oppressive regime. Uh, you know, you're a threat to America's national security. You're a threat to freedom all across the international community. And I don't want to, you know, participate in a quasi-communist free market. I mean, you could keep your money. No, but he he wanted to use the Darfur incident. And can you can y'all explain to me why these liberals in Hollywood are putting so much emphasis on Darfur? I really don't understand why. Maybe the other caller caller would have an idea, but it's like it's it's like people like to make. I mean, there's a really bad situation in Africa. I mean, I feel that Africa is going to be the the country that we ignore and that we will really have a big situation with terrorists if we continue to ignore it the way it did for so long. I agree. Mm -hmm. But don't get me wrong on that, but 
I think that people like to make Africa like their pet project for some reason. I really do, do you think, think it has something to do with the fact that um, – I guess it's just like a scapegoat or something. I, I, I just don't understand. I, I mean, look, I understand that there, there's atrocities happening out there. Um, there should be things done about it. But to see Steven Spielberg pull out of the Olympics as a creative director or whatever he was hired as, and he was being paid by the Chinese government, for him to say, oh, I'm pulling out as being the creative director, because not because China kills every female that's born, and breaks their head open and enforces abortion and has a one-child policy. And if you have more than one child, you either have it forcefully aborted or you're thrown into a damn gulag. Uh, but no, it's because of the Darfur situation. Hey, hey, Ghost, why don't you go into, you've got a lot of listeners in the chat room, why don't you go into the Darfur, what, what it means, what it is? No, I know what it is. I, I mean, well, could you explain it to, I, I mean, I'm a little bit... Uh, Ignorant, I guess, in that to where I don't know the whole thing. Well, Darfur is an area, I believe it's in Africa, am I correct? Yes. And, and, and there's a complete genocide happening by the government regime that's out there. It's actually, okay. uh, it's, it's a regime versus, versus rebel forces, and unfortunately you have uh, a lot of, I wouldn't even call them peasantry. I mean, these people are below peasantry. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they, I mean, peasants at least have land, you know, that they can grow things on. These poor people are just out in the middle of nowhere, and they're being slaughtered. I mean, they're literally being slaughtered for no reason. And believe me, I, I mean, my heart goes out to that. I, I, I mean, I, but I just don't know the remedy to it. Exactly. It's, like it's, really, it's going to be really difficult to remedy something that is by nature very corrupt. I mean, it's, I, I don't know what it could be. I mean, it's going to be like, it's going to be like over decades when you get something like that resolved. I mean, not being, you know, standing off of office about it now like Spielberg is, is fine and good, but it's like you have to actually implement something there. And it's like it's going to be really difficult. It's kind of like Iraq. You're dealing with this cultural idea and this greed that is latent under the surface that it's going to be really difficult to resolve overnight or just being standoffish about it. People need to be really proactive about the situation. I mean, it's not going to do enough just saying that I don't want to support whatever that or support this country because they don't help the poor. But it's like, it's really like a, it's so, it's like a really deep wound that is going to take a long time to resolve. And, and that's just one area of the world that's having such, uh, you know, atrocities happen in mass amounts. And Ethiopia is becoming a big deal. Like, you, know what? For a long you, time. You, you guys are absolutely right. It's it's a total unfortunate situation and whatnot. And the United States government believes that we have to be world protectors. We've got to spread out. This is my opinion. We've got yeah. to spread out our military all over the place to enforce the world. And I think that we need to focus a little bit more on our country and the way how our economics are running right now, how our nation's falling apart, instead of worrying about every other nation out there that's falling apart. Now, I understand with genocide and all that stepping in, but it's, it's, it's come down to a point where how much can we do? How much can we do? And, and you know, that's where uh, uh, Snorted, who's, the, uh, who, who's the, the female on the phone here, She's she, that's what that's the premise of Ron Paul's candidacy. Is is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. It's like you 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 do have those situations in Darfur, and you don't really you don't withdraw from them, but you don't volunteer your military force for something like that. You you try to bring diplomacy that fits what it is they're about. Right. Not necessarily trying to bring the U.S. form of diplomacy or democracy over there. You get a, you, you bring in the village leaders, people that people, you know, the regular people really respect. You find out who those people are, and then you bring them, and then you help them get themselves together. You don't really bring in military or volunteer military because that's just going to bring even more resentment because people don't feel like you have their best interests. I think that I, I, I do consider myself a hawk, and I think that even Ron Paul would consider himself a hawk. I mean, if you need to fight, you fight. Sure. But, you really have to listen to what these people want. I mean, you got You can't say, okay, it's worked over here. You guys are going to get it if you like it or not. Because people in Iraq, they don't want right. democracy. Right. 
like having the Quran to be their Bible, basically. Yep. And, to say, and I think that it's just going to be a situation where you have to just, you don't, it's not isolationism. Ron Paul is not an isolationist. I don't think that he is. I think that he's like, let's go over there. Let me take my secretary of state over there and talk to these people and see what it is that we can get done that can squelch these people who are being violent and committing all of these atrocities and pretty much giving them the ideas to get them to where they need to be. It's not necessarily giving them not only the resources, but ideas as well and using their ideas to help them get to where they want to be. It's not about volunteering our military like we're about to do in Iran, which is making me absolutely livid. It's just, you, it's just really you're, abso- people- you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. And you know why we're not over there right now? Mm-hmm. You know why we're not doing anything right now and all the other – because there's no money to be made by the politicians. Absolutely. There's no money to be made. I well, and not, and not only that, I mean, I think that there's a vested interest in keeping a specifically Africa uh, in such disarray and poverty-stricken, disease-stricken, war-stricken, because there's a lot of natural resources that's dominated out there by foreign interests. Absolutely. And industry. Well, you, oh, I'm sorry? The diamond? Oh, especially the diamond industry. And and I think that's why you have such disarray, and you've always had disarray out there. And I think it's been purposely done so that they can basically, uh, whoever owns a lot of the diamond mines and, and other natural resources out there can keep a stranglehold on it using terrorism. Absolutely. And and it's a shame. And, you know, I'm starting, you know what, Snorted, I'm really starting to change my ideas when it comes to my international relations here. Yeah. Because we need to start worrying about America. Absolutely. We need and, to put ourselves, us taxpayers who are paying the money and and going through this, you know, we need to be put first. You know, we've got just as many homeless and, we, you know, we've got kids starving and dying and, and this and that. And absolutely. And we need to put ourselves first and not be such a world. Pol- it's just, it really makes you think, you know, and it's, it's, it's kind of disgusting. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. It is disgusting. I mean, it makes me want to break something. Uh, it gets me so damn angry because I'm seeing the systematic destruction of America, not only in our freedoms being taken away, but the Constitution is, is going to be null and void here within the next four years, and it doesn't matter who's in office, I believe. I mean, I'd like to think that a true constitutionalist like Ron Paul would have a chance, but I don't think he's going to have a chance. I think, well, I just encourage everyone not to give up. If you really like Ron Paul, I would encourage you to just, you know, monitor his campaign. Just go to his website. I mean, I don't work for Ron Paul. I mean, I'm just a supporter. But I would just encourage you to go to, you know, ronpaul2008.com. Just read up on how he stands on the issues. And you will and just compare it to Obama and Hillary and McCain, and it's just like completely night and day. It's basically, it's not really isolationism. It's just that we have so much debt in America. What would happen if China decided tomorrow or Monday to go ahead and cash in all of their bonds? The dollar would fall like a rock, and we would be destitute. And because I work in the financial industry, I work in the insurance industry. I'm very, I'm familiar. I'm not an expert on it, but I am familiar with it. Sure. If, if China were to, you know, cash in their bonds on Monday, we would be done as a country. Yeah. This is absolutely so. And this is something that could happen because I would encourage you go. I mean, you've been having like sporadic shows that are always over because I don't know about it because they're like spontaneous. Shows. Oh yeah, and and let me tell you, I'm going to continue to have spontaneous shows. I used. <laughs> I usually have them every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking about just going on spontaneously uh, because let me tell you, we need to reach as many people as possible as far as letting people know that the country that we come to know and love, America, is being flushed down the toilet. And it's being flushed down the toilet by the very politicians that these people believe in. And it doesn't matter who you vote for, whether it's uh, Obama, whether it's Hillary Rotten Clinton, whether it's John Turncoat McCain. It doesn't matter. It's the same crap, different plate. They're going to implement the same status quo agenda. 
As a matter of fact, they're going to put more bureaucracy in our, in our faces, more government. They're going to strip away our rights. I mean, this is not what America was. America was about the Constitution. America was about freedom. I mean, here we have a systematic destruction of not only our rights, but the American family. And, and, and this is why I always talk about the American family, or for the family in general, because it's the family that motivates someone to go out and work and, and, and go out and actually put food on the table. I mean, it gives people the motivation to continue going. And, be, and because – I'm sorry? Oh, I just want to say one quick thing, and then I'll sit back and listen for the next 15 minutes. Sure. I just wanted to make sure that in the next coming weeks, there's a very significant uh, event that is expected to happen in Iran. And I don't know if you've heard about it, Ghost, but I hope that you would research it so that you can probably build an entire show around this. It's going to be the implementation of what's called the BORSE, the B-O-U-R-S-E, I believe it's spelled that way. The BORS is basically is going to be how Iran is going to put their oil and their oil products on the world market. Now, the BORS is no longer going to accept the dollar to buy oil. It's only going to accept the euro. Oh. This, is expected, this is expected to happen by the end of February. If this happens the way that they're planning, this says the deadline is by the end of this month, the dollar is going to crash this month. I wouldn't doubt it. Yeah, and I hope that you can research it because I would like to hear your opinion on it. I definitely but, will. Yeah, that's something that people need to be wary of because I really think that this month could be the month where the dollar crashes because we have, with them going and switching to the euro, that's a very significant thing. You and know, on, on top of that, you've got New York, uh, you know, the, these big New York, you know, stores that, you know, sell these, you know, extravagant items that are no longer in New York City, no longer taking the American dollar. Yep, yep, I heard about that. Can you believe that? Yeah, unbelievable. Uh, and believe you know what? We're doing it to ourselves. And you know what? The politicians and whatnot, they need to step up. They need to do something. And us as <clears throat> people who elect these people into office really need to, like our guest on the show says, do the investigating, speak out, right, and, you know, just like you're doing this show, we need to get it out. I mean, and I'm not telling people to go, you know, call to action, you know, and start doing anything crazy. I'm just saying, you know, put some knowledge in that brain of yours. And then once these things start happening, then you'll realize, hey, wait a minute, this idiot was right. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's all I'm saying. Absolutely. I agree. 100%. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and look into that Bors. Uh, you said B-O-R-S-E? It's a B-O-U. Oh, B-O-U. R-S-E. It's like a source with a B. Like okay. Source. Yeah, just go ahead and spell it that way. You'll be able to find it with no problem. Yeah, but that... It's something that could potentially ruin the entire U.S. economy. And it's like, it's not even on the news. <laughs> Uh, I, I believe me. I, I'm, I'm very. This is a very scary election. It's a very scary time for America, and I feel sorry for all Americans that are oblivious to this fact. I agree. What is your next show going to be, Ghost? I don't know. I, yeah, I was going to probably still do one tonight. I believe at 9 p.m. Central. You can okay. do two in one day. Uh, well, I, I mean, I've been on here for a while, so I mean, they let, they allow me to do ah, it. Ah, you've got some push. <laughs> good man. Well, it's good you earned it. I've just started out with my radio show, and uh, I'm working my way up too. But that's awesome, man. I, yeah. I, I, I'm definitely gonna tune in and listen, and I gotta get going. But the caller on the radio, yeah. very educated, intelligent woman on the phone, and I wish her the best of luck. And, and thank you. You. congratulations on everything you've been able to accomplish. I mean, it's like it's always about working your way from the bottom to the top. That's how this country was started, and that's what I was instilled in with my family and morals, and that's what I did. And uh, You well, know what? I, I thank both of you all for calling in because it's been a great discourse here. Actually, thanks a lot, Ghost. I'm going to try to check your show and make sure it's on tonight. Okay, I, I, I think I'll, I'll, po I'll possibly do it tonight. I mean, I just did an impromptu show here because uh, – you know, things are really getting scary, and uh, I think people need to need to talk about it a little bit more often than they do. Absolutely. You're, I, I really appreciate I know a lot of us do. We appreciate you at least talking about it so people can not say they didn't know. Absolutely. Well, I thank you all both for calling, man. All right. all right. God bless. You too. See you. Bye-bye. Well, folks, you know, those were two great American folks 
that gave their opinions, that understand that America is going down a fine line, folks, and people need to wake up, okay? It doesn't matter who you elect. You know, I, I was a lifelong Republican, okay, until this election came along. And then when this election came along, and I saw that the Republicans systematically tried to suppress all the true conservatives that still stuck by the Republican principles, I'm talking a la Duncan Hunter, a la uh, Fred Thompson, these true conservatives, they basically just suppressed them. They didn't give them the media exposure. They didn't give them the, 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 the platform to fundraise properly. They didn't even let Duncan Hunter participate in some of the damn debates. And once I, start, once I saw that happen, I knew something was fishy. I knew something was fishy. We need to understand, folks, that in the next four years, something is coming. Something is coming, and just like they have the European Union, and then I think they're already built the African Union, we are about to merge with Canada, we're about to merge with Mexico, and we're going to have the North American Union. All I'm suggesting to folks is that you need to do some research. You need to get your head out of your asses, okay? You need to take your head out of your ass, and you need to do some research, all right? If you're listening to the sound of my voice right now, that means you have an Internet connection, and that is a tool, folks. You can get all the information you can handle right here on this Internet. And just read up. Do some Googling. And once you, see, once you see these things starting to take place, just remember. Just remember what we were discussing. This is what's happening. I mean, America is going down the tubes. The, the American family is being decimated. And, and, and there's a systematic decimation of the American family because Amer the, the family gives people the, the, the will, the courage, the motivation to go out and work, to go out and do what it takes, fight wars. That sort of thing. But now, you've got an embracing of a society that will allow uh, people to have six, seven different kids from six or seven different partners. You've got the government, the United States government, giving people $2,000 a kid for this crap. It's just sad, folks. I remember America. You remember America? I remember it. It was a great free society. We could go out and be prosperous. We could be business owners. We could do what we want. Now it's just a little it's just a little scary, folks, and I'm not saying to do anything. I'm just saying get yourself some knowledge. Okay, I know that it's fun to, you know, watch these ridiculous television shows and you know, to shove food down your gullet like a damn garbage disposal. I know it's fun to do all that. I know it's fun to go out and beer guzzle and, and, and participate in leisure activities and, and be completely oblivious to everything. I mean, it's more comfortable that way. I know. But it's that mentality is what's perpetuated what's coming on. You know? And I really hope that the American people understand that uh, it's, it's going down the tubes. America is going down the damn tubes. And I've got Republicans talking bad about me. I mean, there are Republicans on this blog talk radio network that are dedicating whole shows to me, yours truly. They are dedicating hate shows to me. These are Republicans that are sitting here... Uh, talking garbage, you know, they're spreading slanderous lies about me because I won't vote for this turncoat John McCain who is two, two issues away from being a full-blown liberal. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter who you vote for in this presidential election, folks, you're going to get the same crap, different plate. I don't want socialism, damn it. I don't want communism, damn it. I don't want this crap. But you see, you've got the dumbing down of America, and it's really not America's fault, because we have a government-funded public education system that has been infiltrated by liberals and feminists 
that have completely emasculated most of the American males nowadays. I mean, you see it. I mean, just just talk to somebody. Talk to a male that graduates from high school, for Christ's sake. Okay? And notice the, 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 the feminine features and their physical attributes, the feminine vernacular. You want to know why that is? It's because the feminists and the liberals that have hijacked uh, the public education system are shoving this down your kid's hole. They are utilizing political correctness to subjugate all of us. And let me tell you, they've hijacked the Republican Party too, folks. If you think that you're something different you know, because you're a Republican, you are not. Believe me, this election goes to show you that liberalism is alive and well in the Republican Party. And I refuse to vote for John McCain. And let me tell you, if you're a Republican that's trying to justify in your simple head that you're just going to go ahead and vote for John McCain because you don't want Hillary or Obama, you're an absolute imbecile, with all due respect, because you are going to go and vote against the principles that was founded, that founded the Republican platform. You are voting against those principles by voting for this liberal piece of trash. I mean, just look at the bills with John McCain's name on them, and you will see how much absolute liberal filth this man represents. He's for more regulations, folks. He's for more government bureaucracy. I wouldn't be surprised if this man uh, passes laws for, to shut up dissension against him. I mean, he'll go off the wazoo for no apparent reason. He's, he's trying to run on the fact, this is, what, this is why he thinks he's conservative. He thinks he's conservative because he's supposed to be pro-life, which I don't believe. And he's a maverick. You know, I'm, you know, this idiot thinks that he's the best wartime president. He, he thinks that he's just going to go out and extend the war into Syria, into Iran. He wants to go into Pakistan. And he wants, and you know, the whole purpose that, ah, the whole purpose why we're in Iraq is to sow the seeds of democracy in the heart of the Middle East. And how are we, America, how are we going to sit here and allow some idiot liberal piece of trash like John McCain, how are we going to allow this man to sow the seeds of democracy in other parts of the world when he or Hillary Rotten Clinton or Barack Hussein Obama, whoever's elected president, is going to take away democracy right here in America? How about that? I mean, d d democracy is going to be taken away here in America, folks. And I just wish people would understand it. Wake up, take a whiff of it. This is the new American socialist, communist America we're living in, folks. Take your heads out of your asses. All right? I'm, I'm sorry for screaming, folks. I really am. But people need to wake up. This is liberalism in full effect out here. I'm a true conservative out here, okay? I'm a foot soldier for the American family. And all I can suggest to you folks out there is to embrace your family, love your families, sit down at a dinner table, enjoy life while you can. Enjoy the last remaining freedoms while you can. Because I guarantee you folks, and mark my words, mark my words, whoever's elected into the presidency, they're going to put so much government bureaucracy and so much government regulation on our lives that we aren't even going to be able to take a damn fart without these people trying to take a whiff of it. We're not even going to be able to go to the bathroom without some government bureaucrat trying to take a damn stool sample from us. That's what's going to happen, folks. And you think I might be being facetious? I'm not. I'm telling the honest to God's truth. And unless these Republicans that are going to turn a blind eye to their principles and vote for John Turncoat liberal piece of trash McCain, if, if you're going to just turn a blind eye to the fact that this man's too damn, uh, too damn issues away from being a liberal, then you're, you're, you're an ass crack, all right? You, you need to be kicked in your ass with all due respect, okay? Anyway, folks, we got one minute in, and I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in with me. 
I'm going to have another show here this evening uh, during my regular scheduled programming time, uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 9 p.m. Central Time. And I want uh, everybody to tune in with me if they can. And at the same time, if you're ever bored one night, you have nothing to do, go to www.blogtalkradio.com slash ghost and check out some of the archive segments and check out uh, ones from the beginning. And you will see that I was a Republican. But since the evolution of this campaign has come along, I have smelt the stench of liberalism take over the Republican Party and America. And I hope that you American people wake up and understand that these liberals are going to take away our freedoms. They've already decimated the American family, and we can't stand for it. Anyway, folks, God bless you all. God bless America. Long live the conservative movement and death to feminism. Thank you very much. Boar's Head is bringing a slice of Japan to the deli. Introducing Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. Tender, slow-roasted chicken breast, coated in our signature teriyaki glaze, where ginger, garlic, and a hint of brown sugar meet for a flavor that's both sweet and savory. New Boar's Head Ichiban Teriyaki-style chicken. The bold flavor of Japan, now at the deli. Only from Boar's Head. Compromise elsewhere.